The EU's highest court has ruled it was unlawful for football's governing bodies to block clubs from participating in a new competition called the European Super League. The plan to create the breakaway league collapsed in 2021 after a bitter fight between European football authorities and some of the most prestigious clubs, along with a strong opposition from fans. Sport Development Company, which is called A22, which proposed the project, welcomed today's ruling. The European Court of Justice ended UEFA's near 70-year monopoly by determining that FIFA and UEFA's rules on prior approval of inter-club competitions are contrary to European Union law. We'll take, join me now to talk more about this and, and actually understand. Uh, Stephen's with me. Um, th the interesting thing about this is the difficult way in which it's been positioned. At the end of the day, this is really about monopoly, isn't it? This is about the court, Stephen, this is about the court saying that the way they proceeded, UEFA and FIFA, was monopolistic. Yes, uh, well, that's exactly right. Um, th this was a case that was originally referred by a local court in Madrid, all the way up to the European Court of Justice. And, and the European Court of Justice have just ruled on comp EC competition law principles with regard to the fact that they accept that UEFA have a monopoly position and they have decided that their current regulations and the way that they decided to say to clubs, you cannot participate in this breakaway league, was an abuse of that dominant position. So it's, it's, it's a very dry um, competition law uh, ruling, really, but obviously it's created quite a, a flurry in the media as a result of the, uh, the, 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 the comments that have been made following that. Right, but, but when I look at what FIFA then said in its statement and UEFA and what they've all said in their statement, I mean, they're all trumpeting there at the way in which they put this thing forward. But, but if they want... They're going, they're going to have to somehow correct the inefficiency or the illegality, the, the monopoly, if they, want, if, they, if they don't want to be found again. Because what I can see happening is somebody else having a go and these organisations, again, trying to stop them, but they're going to have to do it in a different, more transparent, legally way. Yes, because the, the UEFA and FIFA are effectively companies, and so they're subject to competition law, but they straddle uh, commercial rights holders and also uh, regulators. And when they're um, enforcing their powers as regulators, they're saying that because they also hold the commercial rights, they have to abide by competition law principles, and so right. effectively, if they want to decide, if they want to decide to say to the clubs you can't participate in the Super League, then they have to do it in a transparent um, and fair and uh, non-discriminatory way. And they're saying their current roles don't do that. Stephen, is it your view that they can correct? or that they can put that right? Or is the incompatibility between regulator, commercial, and the rules that they play? Because let's take Live Golf and the PGA, for example. Slightly different because, of course, uh, of, of where it was all based. But they managed to get around that in a sort of way. So can UEFA and FIFA find a way around this, in your legal view? Well, the, the interesting thing that's happened is obviously... The ruling is not whether or not the Super League, as it existed in 2021, is a good thing for football. It was just the way that UEFA effectively blocked right. it happening. And, of course, what they've now done is that the people behind the Super League have said, well, actually, all of the public objections to the Super League, because it's a closed shop, it is against the football pyramid, it's not a competition based on merit. They're saying our new model is effectively different to that. And so, actually, now we've got the green light to try and proceed. Actually, what we're going to do is, is a viable um, uh, rival to, to UEFA. And UEFA itself, uh, almost in, in anticipation of this, have actually revised their competition format from next season to make them more games, to have more of a league-type format. So, obviously, they were aware of what's happening here. And so, competition, obviously, if you can have a viable uh, alternative competition, it still relies on the clubs to take part. And one of the issues here, really from a legal point of view, is that competition law in, the, in Europe doesn't apply to England and Scotland following Brexit. And so the local law will, will count. And the football bill that's being brought through by the English Parliament 
um, will effectively preclude from English clubs playing in this league, regardless of the ECJ ruling. Ah, so to a large extent, a lot will be taken out anyway. Yes, I mean, you have this across a lot of uh, football governance at the moment. The, the FIFA football agent regulations, for example, they were brought in by FIFA because of various legal challenges. They're not being applied universally across the board and different rules apply in different jurisdictions. It's... And the same could happen here. So you could say that the continental teams could participate in the league, but in England and right. Scotland, their, their clubs may be precluded from playing because of the legislation the government's looking to pass. Now, assuming I was paying your fees, sir, and I needed an opinion on this, sir, is this one hell of a mess? <laughs> well, you wouldn't have to pay me to uh, to give you that conclusion, but um, the it, obviously it will a lot will depend here on how serious the, right. the people that are backing the alternative Super League are and how far they're prepared to go. Um, and at the end of the day, um, it, the, the, a lot of clubs have come out and said, regardless of this ruling, we're still still not in the game of some taking part in a, in, a com in a competing league. But if you get a, a, a snowball effect where the clubs then actually decide that this is a good, good, a good thing to do, then to answer your question, there is a clearly a legal route for an alternative European league. I'm grateful for you, sir. Thank you. Send the bill to the usual place and it will be put in the usual basket, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. For, jo for joining us.